All right. I want to start a segment here. And this segment or this series is let the vet speak. In other words, let the veteran speak. Many of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that I am a 10-year United States Army um, Staff Sergeant veteran. Um, I was in the 82nd Airborne Division for five and a half years. I uh, went to the 3rd Infantry Division in um, Germany. I came back from Germany, and I spent the remainder of my time in the Joint Readiness Training Center in Op 4. All right. With that, I also have a bunch of other credentials, such as a gold German shoot to sneer, um, air assault qualified, and, and blase, 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 blase. All right, good, good. We got that out of the way preliminaries. And the reason why I actually um, mention these things, because in this world, it seems like nobody can ever really believe, trust, and even at that, it, the jury is still out, and um, people still have their own personal opinion. But it seems like no matter how much experience or facts or credentials that one may have, personal opinion, uh, personal opinion, theology, ideology, or whatever it is in these cases, seems it don't matter except to a few people. So however, with that, all that said, okay, let me lay this out. As I sit back and I think about this Orlando shooting, these are my concerns here. Um, according as it stands right now, and it's subject to change, uh, the official report says that there are 49 people that died uh, 53 wounded, um, and then he had a shootout with law enforcement. My question is this, and I do not mean to be offensive whatsoever at all, but I do want to ask a question, and I want to ask a series of questions. Now listen here. I understand that one gunman, just one, one man with a gun can actually stop 50 people, really. I mean, um, if a man has a gun, he can make everybody rethink everything. But given that situation, because, you know, a soldier, and I'm coming from a soldier perspective and point of view here, we think totally different. Because um, if, if, let's just say, when I was in, uh, let's just say we were at a club, and that club was full of soldiers, all right? Uh, and I'm not saying by any stretch of imagination that you need to be a soldier, a veteran, a Marine, um, a sailor, or anything like that. What I am saying is, is that there is something to be said and there is something to be had um, when someone has that type of experience. Because you think about this, if there was one lone shooter, that's what I'm going to say, if there was one lone shooter, in, that, in those type of close quarters environments right there, you mean to tell me, that while this guy is walking around shooting everybody else, that somebody couldn't have bum rushed him, somebody couldn't have neutralized him um, with the overwhelming numbers that they had there. And my question is this Is this letting us know that we should not have homosexual, gays, or lesbians in the military simply because they do not have the testosterone? nor the testicular fortitude to be able to muster up enough to be able to fight against a threat, much less neutralize a threat in a hostile environment like that? What is this telling us about the LGBT community? You mean to tell me that every time that there's a threat around that people, um, rather than fighting for their life, they all just lay down and, and roll over and shoot and die? Now, I already know what people are going to say. Well, you wasn't there, Pastor Dow. Well, hey, hey. I have heard and I have shot and I have been around so many things that go boom in my life. And, and uh, I tell you, the mindset of men, not just soldiers, but just men in general, if you were to put that type of situation in a heterosexual environment, I'd almost venture to say, and of course we can't really truly say now, can we? Now, as we have something out there to, to show and prove what I'm saying, to substantiate what I'm saying. But I'd almost say that men, when their life is, is on the line and they have the life of others on the line and you're in a situation where chances are you're going to die, it's just kind of like a soldier. Think about this. You know, he could be out there in a hostile environment stuff and a grenade could be thrown in the midst of his comrades. I can tell you right now. I don't know what it is. Reactionary, you can call it whatever you want to call it. But there's something inside of a soldier that will literally run to that grenade 
and throw themselves on that in order to save their buddies. Now, you, you can call it, I don't know, it, would he be classified as a hero? Would he be classified as a maniac? Would he, is he selfish in that, in that sense right there? I mean, these are something to consider. I'm just telling you what I know about soldiers because there is no way in hell that anyone who would have came in a nightclub where there was a bunch of soldiers, men full of testosterone, that they would have literally put up with that kind of threat. Even though this guy had a semi-automatic weapon, as soon as he turned his back, a soldier would have looked for the first opportunity to not only get him and disarm him, but myself personally, I would have got that gun from him if I had an opportunity to do it or one of my comrades. If I had the opportunity to get it, we would have got that gun and we would have emptied and unloaded the whole 30 round clip into his body cavity, head, foot, shoulders, whatever, we would have neutralized the attack. And then we would have did a scan, a type 360, to see if, if there's any more threats on, on the height or, or, or getting ready to rise up again. That's now, that's the way we think. But I'm telling you, you think about this for a second. When we look at this situation, it's obvious that we had a lot of people that had no fight in them. This is obvious. This is facts. And does this mean that people who engage in this alternative lifestyle, homosexual, lesbian, uh, bisexual, uh, transgender, and all this other stuff, do they really truly have what it takes to be able to rise up and fight? Can they fight for our country? Can they fight for you? Uh, I mean, this is something that needs to be addressed. I've waited a couple of days before I bought this out because I wanted to see if anybody else was going to actually approach this. Because we understand our government, when we look at our government, our government, the first thing they want to do is take soldiers who come from a war zone and they want to slap the term on them post-traumatic stress disorder in order to make sure that they all but eliminate them from ever owning any firearms because, I mean, after all, this is the way that the, the civilian population looks at people like me. They think that we ought to be put into a bottle and then you have a hammer next to that bottle and on the outside of that bottle, it says break only in the time of war because they think that's what, that's what they think we're, that's the only thing we're good for. The only thing we're good for. Myself personally, my personal opinion, I don't think they have the testicular fortitude. I don't think that they have the honor. I don't think that they have the presence to be able to protect now think about this everybody keeps saying love one you know the, we, we all, all we need is love and all these rainbows and love wins when it comes to this particular lifestyle but think about this for a second if love wins what happened to the love of somebody laying down their life for their friends rather than just laying down oh it's tough talk um and that's just the way it is but this is something really truly needs to be considered so is this really truly a viable lifestyle that nature itself, because the seed produces up its own kind, sanctions and approve of, or this is something that actually alters and change the chemical composition of a, a man or woman to the point that it makes them docile, dormant, and non-responsive? And only government is the only power that they have especially when it comes to oppression, heterosexuals and their rights. I mean, this is something to consider. So if you're a soldier coming back from a war zone and stuff, the last thing you want to do is go to the VA or disabled American veterans or whatever it is and get some type of diagnosis from some crazy crackpot psychopath schizophrenic doctor that's trying to slap up on you uh, post-traumatic stress disorder so they can disarm you. That's what it's all about. Because remember the government hates the competition and, um, uh, uh, watch this, a disarmed people is a docile people. You just heard the truth. I like to hear what you have to say. And I like to hear what all the gun advocates have to say as well as the people in the LGBT community because, I mean, we're dealing with facts here. We're dealing with an issue that should be answered. I would like to know what you have to say about this. Shalom, have a good day.